Oh, man. The bad man is gone, dude. The bad man. <laughs> gone. So happy. Jesse Davis is going to the Vikings. Thank God. Turnstile. Good luck with that, uh, Kirk Cousins. Start or not start. If he doesn't start, duh, because he shouldn't start. Uh, but, I mean, thank God. Dude is gone. I mean, honestly. I don't want to hear nothing about it. I am, I'm so glad that horror show is over, that they can go in some other direction, any other direction. You want to talk about addition by subtraction. Yeah, obviously important that the Dolphins go on and got Teron Armstead. They need to do some kind of improvement on the offensive line. That was quite obvious. But the idea that they're just not going to have Jesse Davis on the offensive line, to me, that is already going to be an immediate improvement to whomever they go with to guard and block for Tua Tungavailoa on his blind side. Never forget that game that I was at. Boots on the ground, to his ribs, getting cracked in half. Jesse Davis, like, you know, helping him off the field. By the way, how many photos does this guy have of him helping Miami Dolphins quarterbacks just off the field because of blocks he's given up? I mean, maybe every maybe every lineman has a, a compilation like this, but I don't feel like they do. You know, there's one word, Jacoby Brissett legitimately looks dead with uh with with Jesse Davis next to him. So I'm so happy about it, man. I, I'm I'm glad that he's gone and uh, they can move on. It, it's absolutely fantastic. You know, Mike McDaniel and uh, Chris Greer, they're in my neck of the woods. They're up here in Palm Beach by uh, the Breakers. They fancy the Breakers. <laughs> Talking about the moves that they made. Excited to have Tyreek Hill. It was uh, some interesting things. i tell you one thing that I did like, though. There's a couple things that stood out to me. I like the fact, first of all, that Mike McDaniel immediately... <laughs> Nip the Tom Brady news in the bud. You know, I know there's people that are still skeptical, skeptical about this. There are people who are like, listen, I'm not ruling out the Tom Brady thing until I see him take a snap for somebody uh, that, that is not the Miami Dolphins next year. I don't I, 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 I think it's true. I don't think a guy like Mike McDaniel, as crazy as this sounds, I don't think Mike McDaniel wants to be bogged down in his innovative office, his first crack. I don't think you want to be bogged down with the pressures of having a Tom Brady. Second of all, I'm not into the Dolphins having Tom Brady. I'm not, all right? As great as he is, as fantastic as he is, nobody's denying he's the greatest quarterback of all time, that he is the greatest winner sports has ever seen, all that type of stuff. Fan uh, great. But I have seen this movie enough in Dolphins land to know that even if Tom Brady were to come to the Miami Dolphins, he ain't going to be the same Tom Brady, all right? I know immediately as he puts on that Dolphins uniform, he's going to become washed Tom Brady. I've seen this curse. I don't need to see this movie again. Second of all, I'm just not into the idea of the guy who kicked your ass for all those years. As much, you know, modicum of success the Dolphins would have against him in the regular season. The guy who basically reigned over the division. Won all these Super Bowls. I'm not into that guy coming in here and trying to gift you a championship ring. I'm not. It's not. the, And it may sound crazy. It's been 22 years since I won a playoff game. You win a Super Bowl. I, mean, I don't want it done that way. Not with him. Not with him. You know, all these Patriots fans are going to be acting like your, your little Brady cousins. No, not a fan. Not a fan at all with that. But um, I was happy to see him say that that was fake news. I thought that was important. I don't think that you want to talk about having to deal with more bull crap this offseason with rumors and whispers and all that. Believe in them or don't believe in them. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of the, the idea that the guy's got to go through with what he went to had to go through last year with the whole Deshaun Watson thing and seemed like the coaching staff was uh, was pretty open about saying it. Dude, the Brady thing, you're going to add another thing on top of it? I know Stephen Ross loves the guy, so I guess you can never just completely rule it out. But, man, if we're going to do this again, again with Tua Tungavello, we're going to have to do that. I'm glad that Mike McDaniel did what he did. I also was loving the fact that he was like, yeah, we're building that relationship. We're building that trust. That was kind of cool. I liked hearing that from him. That they have, they're not able to do the football stuff yet, which I don't know what the hell that means. Like you're telling me that like, are there police that are if Tua and Mike McDaniel talk football, is that a fine? Like is that what Pete Carroll was getting hit with? Is that the Jags are getting hit with? So like, do they have to talk about Love Is Blind? Do they talk about Vikings Valhalla? Do they just talk about Will Smith slapping Chris Rock? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the the uh, the things that they could talk about are. I like, do they have to use code? Like, does he have to go and say, so Tua, you like uh, big cats? Tua's like, I think they're fine. And he goes, yeah, what's your favorite big cat? 
to it was just like puma he goes puma or cheetah and he goes oh <gasps> now they're on code now they know now they got what's going now now they're in a uh on a, on a rhythm as far as that stuff is concerned so i like the fact that uh Mike McDaniel and Tua, he seems like he's uh, he's excited to to build that relationship with him. I also like the fact that look, dude, the uh, the guy doesn't seem like he hides the idea. Like it's just gonna be boom, boom. I'm gonna guru this thing. You know, Mike McDaniel. The vibe that I get from him is just like I like the idea that he wants everybody working harmoniously. Everybody's gonna be in there as a group together. Everybody's gonna be in there kind of uh, on the same page. I believe the the thing he says, you can't just take a mat take a magic potion and go boom, you're the best. Which would be nice. I mean, like, yeah, I, I kind of feel like that's what people thought Adam Gase was going to do, where he was just like, oh, I know Jake, Jake Cutler's here? Boom, you're the best. Boom. You got that Gase magic. Pew. So I like the fact that Mike McDaniel's coming in here with his vibe of, like, everybody's got to be on the same page. Everybody's got to do well together. Everybody's got to be in this place. And then I also like the fact that he's going and he's saying that everything last year is irrelevant. It's PMM. It's pre-Mike McDaniel. I'm not gonna lie, dude. That gave me the goosies. She's like, <laughs> we're thinking, we're wiping it all the bad vibes away with a little, with a little PMM. First of all, love an acronym. Second of all, um, naming an era pre you, pretty fantastic. So all of that was was uh, was fantastic to hear when it came from uh, from Mike McDaniel this uh, this time around. Now. Some of the other things that are going on in Dolphins land, uh, Barry Jackson asking Chris Greer about Tyron Matthew, the honey badger. There's been some honey badger buzz that's been kind of floating around Dolphins land, Dolphins Reddit, Dolphins Twitter, Dolphins YouTube. Um, apparently, they are good at safety, saying they're not going after honey badger. That seems to make sense. Like, I think, listen, I honestly think they have their star safety. I think Javon Holland is an absolute star in the making. This is not something I feel like I'm breaking news to anybody, but I think we're all impressed with the snowman. This dude goes out there. And I'm not talking, you know, the only thing that he's keeping frosty is everybody else's catches because they're not happening, dude. It really is. It's uh, it's something that's been very, very impressive for this team and this this pick that he was able to find. So I think for uh, I think for them, the Tyron Matthew thing didn't make a whole lot of a sense. I don't know if anybody asked about Debo Samuel um, because that one still intrigues me. I'm not going to lie. I saw that uh, Travis Wingfield, he tweeted out like the top three fastest ball carriers in the NFL last season per average mile per hour. And Tyreek Hill was number one. Jalen Waddle was number three. Debo Samuel was number two. I'm still holding out hope, dude. I really am. Just like the idea, like, first of all, um, I was surprised that Debo was up there like that. And second of all, man, if you had like the triple crown of speed, we're already talking, people are already talking about like Hill, Waddle. Most dirt. People are already calling the Legion of Zoom, which is great. I mean, that's just a mwah, fantastic name. Shout out. Um, but the only thing, the only thing that makes it, it would be better if you made it if you made it zoomier, like that. If you if you just added if you had a little more room, do your zoom zoom. It'd be pretty great. It'd be pretty great. So seeing that was uh, was very very intriguing for sure. The other thing that's interesting is the future of Devontae Parker. Chris Greer is saying that they're getting calls on him. I don't know. That's an interesting one. Like where the idea that they think that he's going to be there. First of all, I think it's smart for the GM to put it in a position where they're like they're not desperate to deal him. You know, maybe Devontae Parker looks at a situation like this. He can look at it two ways. Does he look at the Dolphins and he's been on the Dolphins for a very long time? Does he think this is the best offense he could be a part of? He could be a part of a contender. Obviously, if it comes down to it and they got to pay him, they're not going to pay him. He's going to go somewhere else uh, after this year, I would mean. Um, but so does he look at it like that or does he look at it from a situation of I just want to be in a place where I'm going to get more opportunities because maybe he doesn't feel like this is the spot where he does that. He adds something different. Like look at the Dolphins are going speed, 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 speed all over the place. Devontae Parker, that that big playability to go and, and leap up and get the get the football is something that um, is different from the skill set of a Jalen Waddle, different from the skill set of a Tyree kill. Um, but. Obviously, we know there's durability questions. That's kind of like when you're talking to Devontae Parker, you know that's always going to be a thing. Um, so I don't know. I, I'm still I'm still not sold. I know that he says he expects to be with the Dolphins, but I'm not sold on that. I'm not sold on the idea that he's absolutely going to be back with the team and that that's a, that's a surefire thing to go. 
you know, but it, it's nice to know they're not they're not out here like desperately trying to get rid of him. There's definitely been rumors out there and um, and all that type of stuff. But, you know, for the most part, man, it kind of feels like the Dolphins are kind of swaggering around there. I'll tell you, they're swaggering around more than that Matt Rule, who's got pants that don't even fit. And I got to say, also, as an aside, you know, I saw I saw people giving Mike McDaniel some heat for being an undershirt guy. And as a, as a fat man who sweats in South Florida, first of all, Mike McDaniel, not a fat guy. But I, I sweat my whole life, dude. Even when I wasn't a fat guy, when I was a fat, when I was a, a less fat kid, I would sweat. So maybe he's just a sweater in the South Florida heat. And especially you're wearing that white shirt. You don't want it soaking through. All right, this is a night at Senor Frogs. You don't want a wet T-shirt contest. So I, I feel like people were giving a, a little bit too much heat for Mike McDaniel being an undershirt guy. I, I like the undershirt. I go undershirt when it comes to my other shirts, too. I'm not about showing this whole cleavage area, you know, dude? Especially when it gets beads of sweat down here in South Florida. Some of these, maybe it's a Northeast thing. People don't realize. They're like, oh, you, you, what do you, you got an undershirt? I don't know what voice that is. But the point is, uh, I had no problem with it. Um, I thought he had a good look going with the glasses. With the, it's a cool vibe that he's got. Everybody top Matt Rule, you know? One of the unfortunate things is McVay was so much cool, uh, closer to Matt Rule. I think, one, that made Matt Rule look a lot worse. But also, it doesn't. Bu- you don't get the bump up when you're next to him. So, I don't know, man. But I will say, listen, Greer, McDan- don't be afraid to go to Mamma Mia's or somewhere around the breakers. You, you, you take John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan out to a little lunchy poo. You know, you tell Debo to make a stink. Let's see if we can make some wheeling and dealing still happen. I like the wheel and dealing. I'm a little addicted to it, to be honest with you.